You spoke to Bloomberg about a month ago, and you did, of course, talk about Evergrande. Uh, we know that they have taken steps to uh, increase or improve their liquidity situation, but you were an active and have been an active trader in uh, its dollar notes. So do you see more volatility for this? Have they shored things up enough, or is there more volatility, and how do you play it as a distressed debt specialist? Yes, good morning, uh, Stephen. Well, sorry, they, they heard uh, the signal from the central government and uh, have taken major steps to shore up their liquidity. So short term, uh, they've dealt with, with some of the pressure, uh, but long term, they're still extremely levered, and it's certainly not the, the last turn in the, in the saga and, and in the saga for, for every grande or for many other Chinese developers that are very levered. Well, we're also seeing, of course, kind of signs that the Chinese government is not necessarily going to step in in places where they have in the past. We all know about the ratings agencies in China do not necessarily price the risks adequately. I think 90 percent of uh, many of the Chinese companies' debt issuers are rated at double A or above. So are you seeing that trend as well, that the, the government is not necessarily going to bail out even in the state-owned enterprise space? Yeah, obviously, we, we're seeing that trend. We're not necessarily surprised by that trend. Uh, this is nothing new. If you, if you look back 20 years ago to JD Guangdong Enterprises or the ethics, uh, you know, we've seen that movie before when at some point the central government tells bondholders that there is a significant difference between uh, uh, sovereign risk and lending to a state owned enterprise. And that's what we are right. rediscovering again. And I think that we're going to see more and more of that uh, in the next few months. What opportunities do you see in the SOE space? Well, you know, as, as we've discussed before, the, the difficulty as an investor is that the outcome tends to always be very binary. Uh, the information is very opaque. Uh, and, and, and making a call on whether uh, the company is going to be supported by its bank or build out uh, is, is very difficult. It is very different from uh, the type of analysis that we can pursue in other markets where cash flow is the, is the most important data. Well, where, where do you expect delinquencies to continue to rise in China? Can you pinpoint it? Uh, not, not, you know, not really. There, there's not, uh, you know, besides obviously real estate and, and, and developers, because it's such a levered industry, you can't really pinpoint to, to, to one industry in particular. As I said, it, it's, it, it's going to be, uh, and it is, a uh, very uh, binary outcome. Um, you know, looking, looking more um, widely at Asia, uh, we are spending a lot of time outside of China in countries like India or Indonesia that, to a certain extent, lend themselves better to uh, traditional uh, analytical skills and, uh, and, and valuation analysis. Well, I wanted to talk to you about India because I believe it's one of your biggest uh, targets for investment uh, in Asia, and you are looking at DHFC. You're one of the four bidders there. But, you know, India, obviously, there's been a slew of new regulations. There's a slew of bad debt as well. And there's also moratoriums been put on uh, bankruptcies and insolvencies because of the pandemic and the lockdown and the bad debt and the inefficient banking system that India already has even before this pandemic. So, what are your targets in India right now? We, uh, as, I, as, I, as, I, as I told you before on, on previous interviews, India is a very important market for us. Uh, the size of the market is, uh, is extremely attractive. Uh, there are a lot of hurdles, as you mentioned, to, uh, to do business successfully in India. But we believe that with the right setup, the right team, the right onshore presence, uh, some of those hurdles can be overcome as long as you are very conservative uh, with your assumptions. But we remain very committed to India. We think that 
for many years, we will continue to see uh, a very healthy pipeline of deals coming out of India. And we certainly uh, plan to, to expand aggressively our footprint onshore in India, whether it's uh, growing organically or via uh, quasi-acquisitions like this uh, uh, DHFL portfolio in which uh, we bid in. Well, speaking of, uh, is it Day One Finance? Uh, it's a non-bank, uh, what, household lender, right, that is troubled. Uh, you are one of four bidders there. We're understanding from local media as well that there's been some threats that perhaps you could possibly walk away because, again, some of the financial creditors of this company have extended the bidding process or have actually added a fourth round of bidding. Where, can you update our viewers where you stand on that? Are you preparing to walk away if this keeps on getting dragged out? Well, well Stephen, we, you know, we are very keen to, uh, to be successful as a bidder. Uh, but at the same time, if we do come to the conclusion that we have no chance to win because the the, the rules of the games are, are rigged against you, then you know we will choose not to waste our, our time and energy and focus on other transactions and there are enough transactions around. Well, is the system rigged against you? I mean you have you're up against Abani, uh, a big obvious uh, you know entity. Uh, is there favoritism going on here? And also, there's 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 inklings from the government that they're going to be treating Hong Kong uh, financial investors coming from Hong Kong the same as China in this geopolitical spat, and that maybe some of these financial transactions cross border from Hong Kong are getting held up with extra scrutiny. Well, you know, I, 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 I don't know the answer on whether we have a true sh chance to uh, to buy the. Uh, the portfolio regardless of our price but you know what we've witnessed is is rules that have been changed on us and auctions that uh, have had no outcome besides giving bidder another chance to to participate and sitting on the outside it's it's been an unusual and very frustrating process for for us You have other targets in India, or has this situation made you take a pause? Or are you in it to win it? Uh, we, we're in it to win it. Uh, we're not taking a pause in India, but we started having dialogue with other, lar you know, with other large opportunities. And if it's not this one, there, there'll, there'll be another one. And there are enough uh, platforms that are available in India that, you know, we're confident that we'll, we'll complete a, a strategic uh, transaction at some point in, uh, in the near future.